Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. It's called The Dork Side. Uh, this is where we print, we do 3D printing, prop making of all things nerdy, dorky, hence the name. Anyway, today I want to talk about bed leveling. And um, I do things just slightly different. I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about uh, one specific technique that I use prior to going through the, the typical leveling where you send your print head to the four corners or five points and then you'll move your bed up and down we'll get to that that's something that has to be done what I like to do first is make sure that my Z bar is is uh, the same distance from the, the right side and the left side so the way I do this is I will take a couple of tools you can either use uh, some PLA printed out filament. I'm pretty sure people uh, have a file for this on Thingiverse. It's a, it's just a, a measuring tool. Uh, most people use it to measure their sensor. Uh, what I like to do is I also do painting and airbrushing. So I'll get uh, two of these bottles, these uh, 25 ounce bottle or two, sorry, two ounce bottles of Craftsman acrylic paint. They are identical in size, and what I do is I will put them underneath my Z-Bar and make sure that the Z-Bar is the same here as it is here. And the way I do that, I've already done it to save time, but let me talk you, walk you through kind of the process of what I do. Usually, I found every single printer that I have, that I've gotten, uh, one of the sides will always be maybe 0.2, sometimes even more millimeters uh, off from the other one. And so here's what I do. First of all, don't have these underneath your bar until you get very close to um, where you know you're going to need them to start making your micro adjustments. So here's what I do. I will go into my tools. I will go into my axis, axis, and I will start bringing my Z bar. Usually, I'll start from a high point. It doesn't really matter where it is, but depending on where your Z bar already is, close to your bed, you'll either go up or down on your Z axis. So you'll, whichever one applies to you. And like, for example, let's just say I'm gonna go plus ten. Sorry, let me try to get this to focus. Let's say it was already there. So you see that there's a significant distance between my Z bar and where I want my measuring tool to be. Okay? So I'm going to bring it down. Let's just say it was up here. It doesn't matter where it is. I'm going to bring it uh, down 10. Okay? And then I will see if, that's, uh, if that will fit underneath there. Like, like I said, I already did this, so mine are fine. But sometimes you'll have one that'll fit, and then one won't. So let's say this was the one that wasn't going to fit. Let's say it was uh, this side was too low, and that was resting right on the top of this uh, lid. What you would do at that point is you're going to go back here behind on your rod and you're going to manually rotate this clamp whichever direction is going to get it so that you can either bring it up or down depending on what your needs are okay and once you've got that dialed in you're good to go then just make sure before you move your bar you you know you manually go in here and start making it uh, making it move uh, just keep in mind you don't want these under here anymore, especially if you're going to go down closer to your bed, okay? Like if you're going to go to Z home or whatever, don't do any of that. Uh, be cautious, okay? So again, I already adjusted mine to save time uh, and just kind of talked you through the process. Once you've done it once, you'll totally get what you're going to need. A lot of times what you're going to do is you will, you will, get, you will use your, uh, your higher numbers to get you close 
and then you'll start using micro adjustments by pushing you know the 0.1 or the one millimeter increments to get it uh, as to, to bring it closer and then you will do that manual adjustment with the clamp okay so anyway that's first that's step number one into my bed leveling process then I am going to uh, send it home and then your your motors will kick in and your bar should stay uh, where it needs to be or you know what I mean as far as like it sometimes on depending on what model printer I have I've had a problem with my reality where I'll have to do this again but it's very rare because once the motors kick in one of them will try to overcompensate anyway usually I, ha I haven't had that issue on this printer I really like the uh, the any cubic the Chiron 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 okay so now that we're home what we need to do is we need to go over and I need to print the manual leveling g-code this only takes like a split second okay it's done okay go back all right and then where are we at move the bed I made a list over here and I did not adhere to the list okay one thing you want to do first sorry I need to backtrack you want to heat up your down your nozzle and your bed preferably I use the printing temperature that I actually print at uh, so mine is set for 215 and my bed is set for 65 okay and then you're gonna to want to while this is heating up you can start to lower your bed okay you're gonna take these nozzle these knobbies here and you're just gonna bring your bed as low as possible till it gets nice and tight okay and uh, so your springs are gonna be nice and compact uh, on all four corners okay so just go in here dial these in I like to make myself a cheat sheet so that I know which way I'm supposed to be rotating okay after you've lowered your bed you're gonna do the, the step I just did you're gonna manually you're gonna run the manual leveling g-code and then you are going to move the bed now these the motors should be disengaged you are going to bring your print head over to all four corners and you are going to bring your bed up to your print head okay you see that gap there now what I like to use some people use a piece of paper I want to be as precise as possible every time I found that paper can can rip or business cards can rip or you know they can have a little bit too much cushion in them so I get one of these precision tools I'm trying to get it to, to show you it's a 0.2 millimeter measuring tool okay and this will give me consistency the same consistency all the time I won't have an issue with the, the it ripping uh, once it touches the the knot the the tool I can feel the resistance and paper and business cards I found a problem with those is they tend to um, they tend to either you know like a business card when the nozzle gets to it it can push into it and I'm not really feeling the, the, the resistance I like so anyway we're just gonna start to bring the bed up okay and I usually I'm doing this with uh, two hands so I'll have one hand moving this back and forth and the other one dialing this in so that I can start to feel that resistance almost immediately okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to all four points to save time for this video and then I will come back to you after I've done that one time okay so I have finished going to all four corners but the way I do it if you didn't see it in your uncle if this is your first time doing it, you can you just manually move your nozzle and also your print bed okay so you see how you can push it and pull it so you start with this corner and then you're gonna put once you're done with that one you just push it over to the other corner and then when you're done with that corner when you're done with this corner you pull your bed 
to the other corner. And then when you're done with this corner, you bring your print head to the fourth corner. And when you're done with that, I like to go around one more time just to make sure that everything is still the same. Okay, so after going through all the, sometimes you'll have to make another adjustment. So this one, I feel the consistency is, it, it's not snagging or there's no resistance. So I need to bring my bed up a little bit. There we go. That was just a very small turn. And I'm gonna put my tool into this corner, bring my print head over. Yep. Okay, I need to make another adjustment over here. Bring it up. There we go. That feels good. So I will do this. Sometimes it takes two if two if not three times. Alright, now this, what it did, now this one's up too high. I'm gonna bring it down. Here's another thing I like to do. I will uh, make, I'll take like a sharpie and make uh, markers like every quarter so that when I'm making micro adjustments later, I can see, I can see where it is. I'm not, it, it makes things a lot easier when you can visually see where, how much you've turned the knob. Okay, so I need to bring this down. So just like a quarter turn there. And there we go. Now my consistent, now my resistance is like the way I like it. And I'm going to have to make another adjustment while it's doing the, uh, this isn't done. I know I'm going to have to do some micro adjustments while I'm doing my test print. Okay, let's see that. That's good. All right, well, you know what? I could go for just a slight turn back up. So we're going to do a quarter turn. Oh, needs a little bit more. Is that quarter? All right. I think that should be good enough to at least run our test print. Yep. That's good. I like that. Okay. Now I am going to run my test print. Let's go over here. My temperature dropped. What? You know what? Maybe that had something to do with it. Dang it. I let the temperature go down while I was doing the adjustments but I think I got it in time let's uh, go ahead and run our test print and level test and print while that heats up I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and be back when it starts to print okay here we go the temperature is about to reach where I like it, 215 for my nozzle, my print head, and 50, 60, sorry, for my bed. Now, my uh, test G code does a circle all the way around, and it'll, and then it'll start to do like little half circles on each one of these grids. I like to think of it as a, you know, grid number one, two, three, and four, and what I'm looking for is how well does my filament stay uh, adhere to the bed to the bed plate sorry the bed and what i do is i will come in here you're not supposed to touch these with your finger because you get oil on your bed it's not good you shouldn't do that so here let me just get my tool in and see if i can Oop, see it wants to come off So that means I'm probably going to have to raise this up, bring the bed up just slightly. Now the G-code here for this, I never, I don't, I rarely let it get past 10%. Once I see that I'm getting good adhesion, especially, you know, right here in the areas that I do print a lot. Okay, so most of my models 
Uh, I'm printing like armor and helmets. I rarely have anything outside here, like way out here. This is very rare. Uh, so my helmets generally fit within, you know, this area. If I see uh, this, the layer that you'll see, the, sorry, what I say the layer? When you see it uh, move over to these sections, these grids, uh, that's the one I'm primarily focused on. I mean, I would love to have good adhesion everywhere, but realistically, I don't have a print out here. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, good doesn't want to come off now I know that you don't want your print your filament to smush into your your bed like this so I've been told now I've never really had a problem when I print and this is how my first layer started out I have heard people say that they've had issues because um, the the layer heights and all that start the, how much filament is coming out becomes a problem but I personally have never had an issue with uh, this type of layer first layer okay again I'm not getting and this you know what this could probably just be from I've printed a lot here and I just need to clean my bed this is the area that I'm more concerned about because how much this came off so we'll see what happens when it gets here now once it's done that first uh, layer once it comes over here one time I'm pretty much content with how it turns out if I feel like uh, it, it didn't come out quite the way I want to uh, like for example this is where these uh, markers come in handy so I feel like my bed could raise up a little bit on this side because the way it's the adhesion is the lack thereof is over here so I will just make a quarter turn bringing it up so when it comes back this way mine's going slow enough I'll do it while it's running through so I need to come I need to bring my bed up in a second Let's see if we can catch this okay here we go dial that in so yeah, I just moved it. I moved that from here to there. Let's see what happens when he comes around. Oops, let's come on the side. I could probably move this up, the back corner here up as well, a quarter turn. Well, let's see what happens on this. this one. I mean, it's probably gonna be fine. Now I said I never let it get past 10%. What I'll do is if it's real messy, I mean sometimes that first layer is just like this all over the place. So I'll make some adjustments like you just saw and then I will stop it, take everything off with my scraper and then I'll run the G-code again. I've done that up to three times uh, sometimes. Okay, look at that, that looks good. Well, to me, it looks good. I'm happy. I'm content with the way this is laying down. Because, again, these are my... This is where I primarily print. I mean, there's there's some thickness here. It's not completely smooshed into the bed. Okay. Now, remember, I raised this up on this side. I mean, I hardly ever print out here, so I'm not too concerned with that. This is looking okay. Okay, guys. Um, I think you get the idea. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you uh, also, anybody watching this that is really good at this and, and familiar, really familiar with this printer, the, the Anycubic uh, Chiron, Chiron, you know, let me know, because I'm not an expert at this. This is my first time with this printer, and I would love advice. So thank you very much. You know, guys.
print, get out there, get a 3D printer, print you some cool stuff.